my name is Alan Wood. Um, you can find me on Twitter as Folknology, and uh, I'm here to talk about one of the MyStorm. I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, I did a MyStorm project called uh, Black Ice, which I'm going to talk about. Um, let me quickly go through this because it is a lightning talk. Or not. Okay. In the old fashioned way. Uh, so, my early life story what got me into this nonsense? Well, yep, 160 and one electronics kit. Um, that, that had a big impact. Some of us may have had that. So did this thing, the ZX81, etc. I won't go into all the other stuff. And then we did used to write our programs in textbooks and things. Um, in the early days, we didn't actually have a computer at one of the colleges I went to. So you had to pretend, your partner had to pretend to be the computer and run your programs for you. Um, so what I want to talk about is Black Edge. Now, um, in 2016, myself and a chap called Ken Boak actually decided to build what's called the Black Ice 2. Black Ice 2 was an open source hardware FPGA board, and it was there to complement the emerging open source tool chain for FPGAs based around the lattice chips. And there's a lattice chip on here called the ICE 40. Um, but what I want to talk about today is how we use the Black Edge standard to build what's on the right hand side there, which is the Black Ice MX, which is the latest iteration of the product. So when we were looking at building new versions, we wanted to consider a number of different things. So I wanted to focus really on the standards here. Um, even in the hardware world of FPGA, there's some quite common standards, things like the digital and PMOD format for interfacing between small low bandwidth peripherals, etc. Um, one of the things that we added to uh, PMODs was uh, a mixed signal capability. So you don't get analog normally with your PMOD type plug-in boards, which is a bit of a pain because sometimes you need the analog. Uh, it just turns out that if you put uh, two dual PMODs together, the normal spacing, it's actually controlled in the uh, digital manual about PMODs, it tells you what spacing they should be at. There's, uh, there's room for six pins in between at the same pitch as the other headers. So you can actually fit the analog signals in there. So we've done that with something we call mix mods. Um, so that's just a good way of making the mix signal. And in fact, this is one, one of the reasons that we called it the MX. The MX is really just short for mix signal in this case. Um, just showing the difference between a mix mod and a P mod. Um, here is a P mod type peripheral, and here's the same thing on the right hand side, which is a mix mod version. You see that it's just got the extra pins in the middle, and they're really just the analog pins in this case. And here we see the Black Ice 2, which was the version that was out in 2017, and then we have the new Black Ice MX. I want to briefly talk about that. So, some of the original goals with the project was to try and make everything as open source as possible all the way down. So from the tools all the way down to the boards in which you may do development on or deploy, and then even down into the silicon, et cetera, as far as we can get this. So there's some examples of the current mix mods available that uh, we're shipping for the boards. Um, one of the problems that we have with the Black Ice 2 was PMODs are really good if you just want to just put things together. It's like Lego. It's really simple. The trouble is you end up with these enormous, almost like cross-like things. So when people want to actually use them in projects and deploy them, they become a bit unwieldy. Not only that, mechanically, they're a little bit wobbly and the, it, the fixing isn't very good from a mechanical point of view, from vibration, etc. So integration was a big want from the community. How could we improve integration moving forward? So at this point, we looked at what the options was. So uh, the new projects that we were working on, we co kind of codenamed Black Edge, um, but we're going to re reuse that name as the standard because we decided, well, rather than just doing something kind of that we want, let's open it out and decide exactly how this fits together because that will achieve two things. That means that one, people have got a roadmap to see where we're going. So if they want to design something, uh, we can make sure that it works with those different things. And the other thing is so that other people can play a part and do the same sort of thing themselves, either by producing cores or peripherals for it. Uh, so the way that it works is you have a carrier and a core. 
Okay, so the core is really the bit with the high density electronics on it. It tends to have the FPGA, the target device, and then the carrier is the board that that plugs into, normally sits underneath it. Um, we also keep all the high bandwidth stuff on the core itself as well. So the video type things, MIPI, CSI, that kind of stuff, which I want to keep on the board because it's difficult to move those over the pins. Um, so we're really concentrating on how we interface these slightly lower speed components. Um, the other thing we want to look at is the software that sits on the different layers. Um, we normally use a processor on the board as well as the FPGA itself. So we use the processor or microcontroller to actually program the device under test rather than just using an FTDI chip, for example. Um, so we also need to have libraries and other things that are included in that stack. So the normal output here might be something like uh, a system on a chip that somebody's developing. So we've got a normal way out for things like Litex or Saxon SOC, which are kind of common implementations that people are using as hardware. But on the other side, you have this deployment where you're actually deploying the FPGA and the processor as a final solution. So you're not making a chip in this case, you're actually using the FPGA in a project, in which case you need a kind of runtime stack that needs to be supported. So we're trying to fill out some of the things in there as well. Um, when we started, we kind of didn't want to go the FTDI route. We thought we used the STM32s as a microcontroller uh, instead of the FTDI to do programming, which in the ICE 40 chip, which is what we've been using on Black Ice, it's, it's kind of an SPI programming, but we also use it to program Flash um, so that the ICE 40 FPGA can boot off that Flash as well. So it can do all of those things, but it also gives you some nice bonuses, like it gives you some extra processing power if you want to use it. It also has some very nice ADCs in the current uh, current one. We have three ADCs that work at 2.5 mega samples per second at 12 bit, which is kind of handy to have in as well. So you kind of get those for free. Um, so this shows you the normal setup. You have a UART, which you can use to actually get information debugging information to and from the actual FPGA, uh, as well as the programming commands. And it's smart enough to know when you're trying to program it, as opposed to when you're just sharing information with the device. Um, and then you have um, the Black Edge standard in our case, which I'm gonna talk about briefly now. So it's very, very simple. So this is, if you like, the connection between the core board, which is on top, and then the carrier board underneath. There's two lots of 50-way connectors. Each of the 50-way connectors has 25 pins. Most of these are used for signals. About four or five of them are used for power, uh, which tends to be 3 volt, free, ground, 5 volt or supply from the USB, uh, and a further ground. Then the rest are really digital signals on the top here. We've got 48 digital signals. And then on the bottom, we've got some mixed signals. So there's eight digital signals which may come from the FPGA, as well as 16 analog signals, 15 or 16 analog signals. Um, there are eight reserve signals, and there are also things like SPI, TX, RX, I squared C, and a couple of other things like reset, et cetera, which are useful for uh, controlling the device or sending signals to the carrier. So here's our first project implementation that used the Black Edge standard, which was the new Black Ice MX board. So it's actually a combination of two boards. That's the first thing to notice. Uh, this, is, this is the actual ICE core board that has the FPGA, the Lattice FPGA on it. It's got some SDDR RAM, and then there's the STM32 on it, a USB and a, uh, a video type connector, an SD card underneath. And then that itself sits on top of this board. So you can see how simple our carrier was to design in this case, because there's nothing on it apart from some connectors. So all we're really doing is connecting signals and taking them on to what I mentioned earlier, which is three mix mods, which is equivalent to about six dual P mods. And then this little header down here is something we've had with Black Ice since the very first board, which is useful. It carries a kind of Raspberry Pi 26 pin pin out. Uh, and on here, we've got things like the I squared C, 
SPI. We've also got our SWD pins for programming the STM32, JTAG, that kind of stuff on there as well. So the first uh, implementation um, for a Black Edge project was the Black Ice MX board. Uh, here's a community example that's doing exactly the same thing. So the green board in this case is a carrier, and then the ice core board is sitting on top of that. This is a, um, there was a project somebody did to do ultrasound using the ICE40 uh, FPGA. So this is really an extension of that. So this carrier board connects to a, an ultrasound device, and then it also connects to a Raspberry Pi, which does the imaging. So it's really just for doing ultrasound homemade ultrasound type devices. So that was the first uh, project in our, uh, in the MyStorm community to actually use the Black Edge standard. Why would you use Black Edge versus Mixmod? How will you choose? Well, if you've got existing PMODs that you want to use, just use that because you can plug them in. Um, if you're in the prototype phase, again, stick with the Mixmods and the PMODs. They're very easy to use. Um, mixed mods are backward compatible with PMODs, so you can use your existing PMODs. Uh, if you want, if you've got less than 16 digital or five analog, um, then again, you mixed mods or PMODs will probably do you for pro, certainly for prototyping. It's going to be for more like a commercial product. If you want it more robust, then you're probably going to go for a black edge type device. Uh, project integration, definitely. You want to go the black edge route. If you like systems on a module as a design scenario, then again, Black Edge makes sense. If you need something mechanically robust, if it is very robust in terms of how it fits together. It's very good fit. Uh, so it's good, no problems with uh, vibration. If you want to put it in the enclosure, it's a much more sensible route to go because you can design your carrier board to fit in that enclosure. Um, what carriers are underway? Uh, I personally am working on the industrial kind of power electronics, which is good for automation, robotics, that kind of thing. And that carries both power and digital signals around on a, on a, on a larger carrier board. Um, we've got quite a big retro computing uh, community in, in MyStorm. So there is an effort to build a retro computing carrier that has like old kind of VGA ports and retro controllers and that kind of thing that can plug into it so that they can make game stuff. Um, and then the other thing that is, uh, uh, that people have requested that we're looking into is a heterogeneous SOC type board that has more kind of computery connector sort of stuff for when people are doing more generic kind of computing. So adding things like ethernet and Wi-Fi, um, perhaps more, USB and other digital video type connectors. Um, that's just having a look at kind of the roadmap where we are with different products. See the original MyStorm board, then the Black Ice and Black Ice 2. Black Ice MX, where we are now, um, with Ice Core, and then we've got um, some plans for uh, a kind of Black Ice AX and RX, and then we're also planning to use the ECP5 FPGAs from Lattice as well that enable us to do higher bandwidth type things as well. So expect a Black Edge compatible core uh, with an ECP5 on it probably next year. Any questions? Have you managed to make the business Not yet. <laughs> Possibly. Will do, but not yet. I mean, it kind of pays for itself already, but. Yeah, I, I'm not giving up my day job quite yet. So. Well, I, I mean, in the FPGA world, there's lots of different ones, but the big ones in our community are the Atom. Remember the Atom computer? There's an Atom FPGA version that runs on the MyStorm 2 boards. It's just been ported to the MX boards. Uh, the BBC Micro, that's already running on the old Black Ice 2. Again, that's to be ported to the um, to the MX. It's a bit more difficult on the MX because we're using SDD RAM rather than SRAM. So it's a bit 
doing the, the memory interface is a bit different. Um, what else is there? Uh, Laurie's just got the game, his Game Boy stuff running on the new MX, which is kind of cool. NES Game Boy. What else has he got? He's got quite a few different different ones, but those are the popular ones, I guess. Um, there's the Jupiter running on there as well. That was a kind of Z80, the Jupiter. But yeah, there's lots of them out there. Not all of them have been ported to run on Black Ice. And not Sometimes they need a bit more memory as well. Or with FPGAs, it's not always straightforward to do a port because it depends on how the memory is configured and what sort of memory you're talking to. Just go to tindy.com, have a look, or just do a search for Black Ice on um, Google. It should point you either to our forum. Uh, if you just go to mystorm.com, Dot UK, you'll see all of our forum blogs, everything as well, and that will have a link to the uh, Tindy Tindy site, which sells all sorts of different interesting hardware, not just our stuff. How big is the uh, MyStorm community? I've not no idea. Yeah, it's not a lot of people. Um, only a small number of people actually join the forum. Despite me, you know, every shipment we make. I always email them all the details and say, please come and join the forum. But only a small portion of them ever join the forum. So I've no idea, really. I mean, the forum, I don't know. It, like a lot of forums, there are some people that are, do a lot of talking on the forum and a lot of people lurk. So it's yeah. difficult to say. I couldn't tell you how many users I haven't looked recently. <laughs> we, we've got a lot of boards out there, but... I don't know how many are being actively used. Any other questions? Which one? Uh, the MX has been shipping since June. So, yeah, it's been available for a while. It's $59, uh, unless you add some of the Mickey Mouse, in which case it gets a bit more expensive. But you can pick and choose which ones you want. Okay.